I quote Dusho here. He said it. What is an art? Who decided? Critics decided or the maker decided? So I tell you, the problem is not what is art. The problem is the definition of art. I think the art need the definition need to be fluid. The minute you decide what is art, then you decide okay, this and this is art. To me, the definition of art itself need a very it need a fluidity. I always thought, you know, we are a land of threads, right? Yes. You have to have the Janai, yes, you have to have the Rakhi. <laughs> we are just, threads are everywhere. And yes. yet we seem to not go into, I'm all about fashion being social, political, emotional. And I just wanted to know that, is it just me? But I do feel that this dialogue was seriously missing in a narrative as a modern country. Um, so talking about modernity, I want to hear your thoughts about identity and textiles. I'm not going to say fashion because again, I know you don't like the word, okay. but identity and textiles, because I know that you feel strongly about it. Yeah, so, you know, it is very interesting. Uh, it's, 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 so, it's woven like this, first of all. So I don't know from where to I start also. I mean, um, whether you can question it whether it's right and wrong, but the way the turban is tying, right? Mm -hmm. New in Rajasthan, what kind of, what community was caste is from. And more than that, also occupation he is in. So it is very interesting, even the motifs are developed around that. Let's say the burfi, the way certainly, the way it's cut the burfi is not square like a, like this, and that's how exactly you find on Bandini as well. Right. right? The, the way the water is shown like this, like a samundri, like a waves in Laharia, so is on textile of Laharia in Rajasthan. The symbolic of how important the water is. Like everything have not developed in let's say 100, 200 years. It took so many 100,000 years to get there. So I think it's interesting the body type also, what to decide. Let's say in, in Marasa, they were in Nawari Sari, in Rajasthan, I don't know what weather type, but they didn't wear a sari and then they wore a lehenga like the skirt is maybe because too much and hot in the weather and airy. I don't understand. But even the time of it also did tell them where it's come from. The blouse and without petticoat, you know that we had 80 different kind of way of tying the saris, three and a half meter to nine meter. More than that, in the width also is varied. Certain people worked in a field to or they did a horse riding, or, or you know, one can even run a cycle. So it is varied. I don't know from where to one start, from motif to dying pattern to the size of it, the content of it also. Let's say Rajasthan wasn't a cotton producer uh, state. So they don't really have a big weaving pocket. They was about surface ornamentation. So fabric was woven somewhere else, and it came to Rajasthan, and then they did tie and dye and the embroideries more over it. So everything is such an interlinked from where to look at from, from producing, identity, but, visual everywhere. Which is the most fascinating, which is the most fascinating thing about Indian textiles and again, Indian textiles and fashion, because yeah. if fashion is what we are wearing every day, then we are also wearing a saris pretty much now as women did 3000 years ago. So you've used all kinds of amazing traditional um, practices mm. in your design mm. philosophy, including um, global influences, the Greco-Roman influence that sits alongside uh, bronzes of Hanuman or what have you. Mm. So tell us that process. Okay, so I, I really believe that you know, there are, as I said, it's textile is very individualistic and regional. At the same time, we also have a shared history, a common heritage. And I give you, for example, when I looked at the early art from, uh, from Romans, Harappa, or, or Egyptian, they 
very difficult to find which one is from where. Okay, so one of the, the line what we made in object, actually it is made in Iran. And it's very interesting that travel from Africa to Iran and Iran, it has the now Asiatic land only in Gil. And I deliberately made, I decided to make a loin and it's very interesting made in Iran, but only exists in India right now in Gujarat Gil. So what impression is leaves, even the vegetation, animal around us, and how the shared common heritage. See, you may change the boundaries of country. You keep redrawing your lines. This is now Rajasthan. This is this part of Pakistan, uh, uh, which is Reshma come from, the singer. And this is the part of Rajasthan and Pakistan and Gujarat border are very similar. But if you've seen a span of history, you'll be laughing at it. For 30, 40 years, it was three different countries. Or for 100 years. But 500 years, it was a one nation. So like that. So sometimes I see things like that, you know. We do have so much of common shared, um, more than uh, we divide in country and reason and religion, but at the end of the day, we are humans. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the Silk Route was a classic example of how creativity and trading just moved from one boundary to another, right? That's right. So I would love to get a couple of anecdotes about this. It could be shared heritage whether it comes from two continents away, or it could be something quite specific to a region. Like what in your journey in textile, fashion, clothing, artisanal craftsmanship, what were the stories that really impacted you? See, as I said in the beginning, that I'm having a dialogue with myself, own self, and a work in a context. I think, I don't really think that only I go to Taj Mahal and I see Taj Mahal, the Taj Mahal inspired me to do something. It doesn't happen that direct to me. Of course, it can happen, but there are certain stereotypes I always like to break. Like, I remember when I was NIFT and then my teacher told me, oh, lime green can't be ever be sophisticated. It's such a gamaru color, it's like a desi color. I come from a village where my daddy wore it on teeth and she looked fabulous. To me, idea of what is this minimalism and maximalism? I always question that. And what is the sophistication? I did use lime green as much possible, and I think for a some greater degree it was considered sophisticated. I always believed in, let's say, I, as I said, that what is the visual imagery going to be? What is the visual vocabulary going to be? So is there going to be elephant and carry? Why not could be monkey over there? Certain time, let's say I give an example of mushroom. Mushroom was only woven in a very small narrow loom, but it was only form of a textile in terms of a stole. It is a thick fabric. It came from Middle East through the trade to India. So are we going to die with it that because it's too thick and it's not very off for a weather kind what we live in today? So what I had to do is that I really thought that why can't we mushroom be just woven in a cotton fabric and it's become a first sari. It become a first sari for me where the the sari is cotton or the silk and just mushroom is woven on the border. So that was the first ever sari happened, which is, you can call a mushroom sari. Things like that. Sometimes you want to revive it. Sometimes you want to fracture things. Sometimes you want to change it. Sometimes you agree with it. Sometimes you disagree with it. I think that is a, a conversation keep going with my work. Now, let your imagination fly and don't say no. But if you were to do an amazing exhibition. Mm. What kind of an exhibition would it be? Okay, so as I've seen, uh, exhibition could be many different forms of it. As I said, my exhibition may be just not going to be on the wall maybe, and I think it's going to be full with performance and music, food, textile, I think I'm going to put it, these are going to be expect of it. The, what is the layout and where and how, I don't know yet. But I think there are many different mediums going to come across for me. What I think an exhibition is going to be. I want to show the world that how does the design is not in a separation. We don't look the design in a separation in India or in art and craft. So let's talk about that once before we part ways. Design is not in separation from life. 
I want to hear your thoughts on that. Well, so I would say that I think I remember one of the quote from an NID teacher. He said, if you do not know the politics of country, you don't have a right to design. What I meant by this, that mushroom came by the rulers, Muslim rulers to India. So, so many things uh, affects the design, the vegetation of around it, as I give you example of Iran, the loin, where it is completely gone, but how the footprint is still there. Design, what motif you make it? Is it a mogra or a bird or rose? We don't have tulip, let's say, in Chanderi saris. So how does design influence all around in the community, the weather? I think is we, we need to be all aware of it, what is around us. It could be weather to country, religion, identity, community, everything. Right. So I like that point very much, Sanjay. Mm -hmm. It is um, the art is not made for the museum then, or rather mm -hmm. that textile is not meant for, it's not crafted for mm -hmm. that kind of viewing, right? Mm -hmm. The way we observe art today is mm -hmm. very different from, I guess, what our heritage has taught us. Well, I... I, I absolutely, absolutely love Nasreen's work, first of all. I love the simplicity of it and the way she expressed through the line. Her line was the language. If she's anything, she expressed through the lines. And I love that medium. It restricts me. You know, I, as much as I like the freedom, I like the restrictions in design, by the way. I think it gives me a focus. It gives me a focal point. So that's what it does to me. How I've been very restrictive to express myself only through the line. And I love the idea about the Nasreen. And secondary deco, I'm not much fan of deco too. I am not a big fan of the uh, text like uh, Gayatri Devi, the chiffon saris, or or you know the uh, the floral motif as such. But you know, I always also decided I wanted to do something which I don't like to. I wanted to explore that what is not that what I don't like, and if I like it, what is that form I going to like it? So that was a challenge for myself. The deco itself, if I do not like, then what kind of deco I would like it? And that's what I express in sari border and saris. So as I said, it's not a one formula for me, it works one day. That is my piaz here. You know, given that we are living in COVID times and we are so hooked into all the political strife that's happening all over the world, whether it's for Black Lives Matter, to gender politics, to LGBTQ rights, you name it. I have never seen fashion becoming more important than now in an arena of protest, because we are literally wearing our ideals in us, on our sleeves and walking on the streets and being captured by every phone camera and being exposed, your ideals and your ideologies and what you stand for being exposed to the world. So you as yourself have become a work of art. You are the canvas. You know, if I stand there and protest what I'm wearing, what I'm protesting for, I am the biggest canvas that I can showcase to the world. So I find the idea that of, you know, going somewhere to see art seems quite, quite, quite regressive because it's happening all around us in the way we're living. I think uh, it is interesting to see, as he's talking about the miniatures, I think the miniature was the photographs of that time, if I can say so. Correct. Yeah. So I think that uh, certain people decided to paint today when you have, I want to question if there was a photographer then, then would you photograph it or paint it? So there are medium expressing. I think they were uh, depicting or they were expressing the way the darbar were run or the certain story to express or a calendar. So I think it changed a lot to photograph, to imagery, illustration. There are all different forms of it. The idea of expression. People did weave it or did made fulkari or did as an illustration or, or films you know, on that matter. I think these are, I would say, different changing time of miniature. That's how I see it. And it, it changed from Pahari painting for Mughals. Suddenly, uh, Krishna wore uh, something like a Mughal attire and his crown also changed according to the who is ruling that country at that point of time. So it is very interesting to see. It does tell you, uh, give you a time where we had designed a paper. It tell you, okay, this miniature done on that paper. That means the paper had arrived. This is the time of the history we're talking about. I think every piece of information telling and expressing 
an indicating of some indicator of something. Um, uh, yeah, because let's let's go back to like there's a particular way, Sanjay, that you shoot your campaigns. Yeah. You know, there's you, I know that you work really deeply and very hard to mm. have the right nuanced way of uh, expressing what you do with the cloth in photographs. Mm. So tell us about that journey because well, it's then, as artistic as you uh, being involved in the textile world. Well, when I started working the textile, of course I wanted to shoot it and express and it's kind of a communication, right? And I wanted to show that it is very interesting when I looked at Indian so-called textile or garment, the fashion, whatever you call it, I didn't have any reference to it. So what was our historical reference to the textile or asari? Everything what I saw is so-called fashion photography from the West to me. So I really questioned it. I, I called a few journalist friend of mine. I said, I want you to shoot it. And that happened from the open magazine or certain people who never showed fashion before. And people also who were the, uh, the model, they were, they would know, I didn't have any particular age in my mind or the certain occupation. I think that was also a very, very, uh, people could relate to it. And I, once I had everything colored, once I had something, no model in it. And I've been questioning many different perspective and point of view. And I think that's been exploring through the dance and to the music. When I had a whole campaign for Heer, I went to Baradri Palace in Patiala. I, my brother just got married and I saw the Sikh culture very closely and I asked all the friends of my sister-in-laws and they were, they were the models there. And all they wanted it, I said, do not just express what you had in wedding. And that's exactly become, um, it was very well received, but I don't think so. I really planned it. I really don't think that I had a certain reference. I think the reference was always been a culture to me, not as such a fashion. Yeah, I think, you know, subliminally, you've always been in that quest to <laughs> explore the lack of a better word, the Indianness of the narrative, okay, of the fashion narrative. Like, where do we stand given that our fashion education? is so westernized so mm. what is our language That's what it. is our perception right so i think what i appreciated i remember seeing all the photographs that were taken from your campaigns the idea of so-called non-models or ordinary women like me for instance who was in your campaign you know someone i could relate to someone who's probably who goes to work and has to handle three kids in the house or whatever it is. So that level of democratization of that imagery was very important to India at the time that you did it. Now it's become a fad because yeah. of diversity. Now it's a fad, you know, then you, yeah, now it's not even about using models. It's now the models have to look different and have a different color, have a different hair, whatever it is to show diversity, not really, I don't know if it's about belief anymore. It's just become a fad. But I do remember your campaigns stirring that pot of diversity way before it became a trend. Well, thank you very much, Sanjay, for this amazing conversation. Yeah. On that note, I absolutely believe on a Tamil philosopher who said, life is an onion. Dunya piyase. There's nothing in the end and we must believe in it is only about the journey, how well we travel. So is one layer to layer, I think that's what I absolutely believe in. Actually, there's nothing in the end. It's all how well we travel. Thank you, Kiran Art and Museum of Art, giving this wonderful platform with Banda, and uh, thanks for expressing myself. <laughs> Yet no yet no you